Hi everybody, welcome to my homestead and welcome to my channel. My name is Jared. I got this email from Anonymous. The subject line says rare twin solar flares. And in the email, thought you'd find this interesting. And there's a link for space.com. Thanks. Please keep me anonymous if you use my email. Of course. So uh, this piqued my interest because I've been keep trying to keep track of things going on with the sun. And with this email and this article, I've finally decided to put together a new spreadsheet just for the sun. Uh, before this point, I've had spreadsheets for solar flares. I've had spreadsheets for asteroids, meteors, and comets. And uh, I think I'm going to add another one just for generic uh, events taking place in space, whether it's planets or stars from other solar systems. But it just keeps piling up, and I, I got to keep it straight. So if you want to check this out, this is my newest spreadsheet. It's under Signs Sun. Uh, the link for my spreadsheet, uh, well, all these spreadsheets, is one. it's one link, is in the description box of every video, and you can access this anytime. So what I wanted to do was first go over the article, and then after that, do a review of everything that's been going on with the sun. And there has been a lot, a lot of record-breaking events and unprecedented uh, occurrences and just a lot of things that the sun is getting really active. We're getting pretty close to uh, solar maximum. Um, in fact, they think that we could already be in solar maximum, but uh, regardless, there are things that have been taking place lately that have never happened before or are record breaking. So we'll do a review, but first let's go ahead and let's look at this article. Okay. So the title is Near Simultaneous Solar Flares Explode from Opposite Sides of the Sun in Extremely Rare Event. Okay, so here it is right here. A pair of powerful solar flares recently exploded almost simultaneously, quote unquote, from two different sunspots. Okay, this is what makes it rare. Uh, this is one of the defining characteristics is that it's from two different sunspots located on opposite hemispheres of our star. The extremely rare phenomenon knows that, known as a sympathetic solar flare is another reminder that we are fast approaching the explosive peak in the sun's 11-year cycle known as the solar maximum. If you didn't know, uh, the sun goes through these cycles of uh, heightened activity and then uh, less activity and it, it, it runs over the course of about 11 years, okay? So we're getting close to what's called solar maximum when it's the most active. All right, continuing. On January 22nd at around 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time, the two solar flares exploded at almost the exact same time from sunspots AR3559 and AR3561, which at the time were separated by around 310,000 miles or 500,000 kilometers, farther than the average di distance between the, the moon and earth, according to spaceweather.com. The flares had a combined power equivalent to an M5.1 magnitude flare, the second most powerful class of flare the sun can produce. And uh, just in case you don't know, the most powerful class is X class. And uh, we're going to be talking about that um, once we go through the review. Uh, like I said, this is one of my other spreadsheets, and it's relatively new. <laughs> Excuse me. It's called. I have two of them. I have one that's called, uh, let's see, Signs Solar Flares Top 50, and then another one called Signs Solar Flares All. So I have the, the top 50 of all time, uh, according to spaceweather.com, and then you have this other spreadsheet, um, which doesn't have all the solar flares, but... It has the top 50, <laughs> excuse me, the top 50 of each solar cycle. Um, I don't know anywhere else where I can find a list of all solar flares. I don't know if such a thing exists, but at least I have access to the top 50 of each solar cycle. And that's what I have on this spreadsheet. Uh, we'll come back to that later because there's some, some interesting things to point out. Okay, so solar flares can also launch fast-moving clouds of magnetized plasma into space known as coronal mass ejections, or CMEs. So don't get it confused. Th these two things, solar flares and CMEs, are not the same thing, although 
um, flares can produce CMEs. You, you understand? So, but you could also have just a, a flare by itself without a CME, which can barrel into Earth and trigger geomagnetic storms that create colorful auroras. But on this occasion, neither flares, or sorry, neither flare seems to have released a CME. Solar flares can occasionally occur in rapid succession from the same sunspot. Okay, same sunspot. This can trigger cannibal CMEs, quote unquote, if the flares both launch solar eruptions and later merge into a larger solar storm. But a sympathetic solar flare, so that's the one that we're talking about, two solar flares from two different sunspots, but a sympathetic solar flare is a completely different beast compared to a sunspot that produces two uh, flares at the same time. Okay, it's different. In the past, researchers assumed that a sympathetic flare was just a freak coincidence. So I guess that just goes to show you uh, how rare uh, it is because in the past they were just like, oh, this is like a, a one-off thing or it's, it's just a coincidence. But anyway, so it's really rare. But a 2002 study revealed that the flare pairs are actually linked together a more or more accurately their sunspots are linked together by massive invisible magnetic field loops that arc around the sun. Therefore, the flares can be considered as two parts of a single explosion. The twin components of a sympathetic flare can be separated by up to 30 minutes, according to the study. It is, it is unclear exactly how much time elapsed between the eruptions from the recent pair, but they were likely separated by only a few minutes, if not mere seconds, according to footage captured by NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. Sympathetic flares are extremely rare, but they are more common, or they can become more common during solar maximum, when the sun's magnetic field starts to break down and becomes more entangled with itself. A 2022 study analyzing 40 years of solar flare data revealed. <clears throat> okay, so with this, it's not that it's never happened. It's just that it's rare. And when it does happen, it's more likely to happen, it sounds, during solar maximum. So I don't know. This may be further evidence that we are getting into solar maximum. And I don't know if solar maximum, if solar maximum plays into the timing of the second coming. I wouldn't be surprised if it does, but I also wouldn't be surprised if it didn't. It's just something that I want to take note of. And uh, even though something happens that we've seen before, it doesn't mean that it's not a sign. If it's something that captures your attention, if you feel like it means something, if you feel the spirit, if it, um, you know, does these type of things, it very well could be a sign. It doesn't have to be unexplainable. It doesn't have to be magic. It doesn't have to be the only time something's ever happened. Uh, I'll just bring it up, bring it up again in the scriptures. You you find the the phrase signs and wonders, time and time again. And a wonder, I'm I'm not going to look it up in the dictionary, but it's essentially a wonder as as recorded in the dictionary or as it's defined in the dictionary, um, is something that causes. Uh, dang it, I can't I can't remember how it's worded. Okay, fine. Let's just okay. Let's go to dictionaries. Let's pull up the three that I use. <clears throat> okay, Webster or Miriam Webster, wonder. And we're looking for uh, the noun wonder. A cause of astonishment or admiration. Okay, that's a wonder. A cause of astonishment or admiration. Um, there's more. We could go to Webster's. 1828, but I'm not going to do that here. Didn't even really want to do that. So anyway, this is in fact a wonder and it could be a sign. So let's just take note of it. All right. Continuing, uh, solar activity has been, been quickly ramping up over the, over the last 12 months. During this time, we have seen an increase in the number and size of sunspots, as well as more frequent and more powerful solar flares. Scientists originally predicted that the solar maximum would arrive in 2025 and be weak compared to past maximums, but mounting evidence to the contrary has changed their minds. 
They now believe that the sun's chaotic peak could begin in the next few months, if it hasn't already. Now, it didn't say anything about how weak this one will be. It just said that they expected this one to be weak and that it would come in 2025. I don't know if they um, are still expecting expecting it to be weak. I haven't seen anything to really, uh, to really suggest one way or the other, just out of all of the different things that I've read. But what I can say is that, uh, and w- with certainty, is that there has been a lot of activity. And like I said, there's been a lot of unprecedented and record-breaking things happening recently with the sun. Okay? So I wish I could go back even further and have more data, but I don't. But uh, this is what I have. Uh, We're going to start in 2015. Uh, The reason why I have an entry in 2015 is just to show that um, large coronal holes Uh, They're not uncommon. Sometimes people will come across an article and uh, think that it's like a big deal, that there's this large coronal hole, but it's actually uh, pretty common. And so I have some examples of that on my spreadsheet. So it's not that I'm taking this as anything out of the ordinary. It's just to, to, you know, remind ourselves that it's common. So I'm going to go in order chronologically starting in 2015. And we're going to go back and forth between this screen and what I have here. So space.com this is october 15th 2015 giant hole in sun is 50 earths wide and there's a a picture of it it's not an actual like hole um it's called the coronal hole i'm not going to go into the science of it but um it's essentially just a if i remember right it's a a cooler yeah a cooler okay i guess we will get into they are areas within within the sun's outermost layer called its corona, which are lower density and cooler. Okay, so it's not a hole; um, it just looks like a hole, but it's an area where that's less dense and it's cooler than the rest of the sun. So this is back in 2015. Okay, let's move on to the next one. Uh, the next year, on the 16th of June, there was another one. This is from Futurism. NASA found what appears to be an enormous dark spot on the sun. And it's not a very long article. It doesn't really say much. And it doesn't say the size of this uh, coronal hole. Uh, When you compare the two, it looks pretty similar in size. The one in 2015 was 50 Earths wide. But this article doesn't say how wide this one was. But So so there you have uh, two years in a row. Then we're going to skip forward to November 22nd of 2021. Okay. A giant hole in the sun is throwing out charged particles toward Earth. And here it is again. And I don't know which one is the hole. (coughs) Excuse me. I don't know which one is the hole down here or if it's this one up here. Those both look pretty large. There seems to be kind of like a third one. I don't know. But uh, this article also... um, it omits the part of how wide it is compared to the earth. So whatever, but so 2021, another one in 2022, August 21st, here you go. And again, it looks like it, it, I don't know, just eyeballing it. Um, I know that's not very scientific, but just eyeballing it. Uh, it looks like it's about the same size as these other ones, you know, so it does, it doesn't look like it's anything out of the ordinary, a uh, massive coronal hole in the sun will it impact earth. Okay, so whatever, 2022. Okay, now, uh, also in 2022, and this is the first one that I have on my on my spreadsheet that I consider a sign or a wonder, uh, more so than these coronal holes. Okay, September 5th, sun produces an explosion, uh, a coronal mass ejection, a CME, so large that it will be studied for years, quote unquote. And then this is from George Ho, a space physicist at Johns Hop, John Hop, is it Johns Hopkins University? Let's find this out. I thought it was John Hopkins. No, it's Johns Hopkins. Okay. Learn something new every day. George Ho, a space physicist at John, uh, Johns Hopkins University. He says, I can safely say that the September 5th event is one of the largest, if not the largest, 
solar the solar energetic particle SEP storms that we have seen so far since Solar Orbiter launched in 2020. Okay, so they're going to be studying this for years. Big explosion, big CME. Next one, uh, this is just for the month of December. It doesn't give uh, an like an actual day or a range. It's just no uh, December. Sun emits a burst of high sorry sun emits a burst of high speed solar wind sweeping away a region of the regular solar wind around mars leaving a void in its wake so just so you can kind of visualize that here's the article from newsweek the sun just produced an explosion so big no that's the wrong one uh the solar wind which the sun is constantly blasting over the planets suddenly disappeared and created a void around Mars. Uh, That sounds kind of terrifying, but here's like a visualization of solar wind. And so if you can imagine that just like being uh, blown away, uh, that's what happened. Okay, so the planet's atmosphere swelled by thousands of kilometers as a result. Quote, each solar storm is different, but this one is extra different said Shannon Curry, principal investigator of the MAVEN mission in a briefing. So you can read more about that in the article. By the way, all these articles, I'm going to put them in the description below. Okay, now we're in 2023, the 2nd of February, Groundhog, Groundhog's Day. Enormous and unprecedented vortex. Okay, never happened before, or at least it's never been observed before by modern science. Enormous and unprecedented vortex spotted around the sun's north pole. Scientists can't explain it. And uh, we have a video of that. Space.com. Strange unprecedented vortex spotted around the sun's north pole. Uh, Watch for it up here. It's kind of subtle, but it's this right here, right there. Just like a swirling, okay, taking place at the top of the sun. Uh, Some people in the comments before have uh, described it or likened it to a crown, you know, a crown on the sun. Uh, I mean, sure. Yeah, Uh, you could look at it that way. Maybe maybe that's how it's supposed to be looked at. But whatever the case, they've never seen this before. Uh, If I remember right, however, they have seen like this is like a known phenomenon. They just haven't seen this kind of behavior associated with the phenomenon. So it's not completely unknown. It's just that they've never seen this happen uh, when this occurs. And I can't remember what they, you know, everything about it, but if you want to learn more, like I said, I'll put the uh, link in the description below. But this right here has never been witnessed before. Interesting. Okay, the next one, (coughs) excuse me, uh, the 18th of March, Enormous solar tornado the size of 14 stacked Earths forms at Sun's North Pole. Space weather enthusiasts claim to have never seen one as colossal as this one. So we don't know that it's um, the biggest one ever seen, but people that are really uh, into this kind of stuff, they they claim that they've never seen one this big. So there it is. And uh, just another one of those things that is pretty terrifying to look at. Uh, Imagine if you were just like up close and personal with that. So that's interesting. I'm taking note of that. You know, if it's something that the space, the space enthusiasts uh, think is incredible, then uh, I'll, I'll take note of that. Okay. The 20th of March, large coronal hole, uh, 20 to 30 earths wide. So the last time that we saw a coronal hole that I know of, that I have on my on my tracker, was uh, 2022, the year before. So 2021, 2022, and now 2023 all saw large coronal holes. This one describes it as between 20 and 30 Earths wide. So let's take a look at that. Uh, this one has an animation, <clears throat> or it has um, you know video. A business insider, a whole 30 times Earth size has spread across the sun, blasting solar winds that'll hit our planet by end of this week. So uh, that's pretty crazy looking. Although 
again, just eyeballing it when you compare it to some of these other ones, it looks pretty close in size. And if in fact, maybe a little bit smaller, I don't know. The one back in 2015 was 50 earths wide. And this one is uh 20 to 30. So it is smaller than, than that other one, but there you go. Okay. Let's move on. June of 2020 of 2023, the sun produced over 160 sunspots in June, which is the highest monthly number of a single uh, for a single month since September 2002. Um, okay, so that's interesting. So this is, uh, I guess you could say the most active month since 2002. That's a long time. Uh, 2002 is more than 11 years ago. So this would go back a couple solar cycles. But anyway, sun breaks out with record number of sunspots, sparking solar storm concerns. And when it says record, I think it just means since 2002. I don't remember. I'm just, I'm going to check really quick. Uh, the data, the data, okay. The data confirm, that's how it's written. The data confirm that the current solar cycle, the 25th since records began is picking up in an, okay, it doesn't say anything. All right, so whatever, we'll take note of it. The 15th of July, initially peak activity, this is talking about for the solar cycle. Um, initially peak activity for solar cycle 25 was forecast to begin in July, 2025. Now, Experts believe the cyclical peak is more likely to take place in mid to late 2024. But we just read that article that said that it could have already started. Um, so maybe even sooner. Now, I find it interesting that this is happening in 2024 uh, for a number of different reasons. There's all the things that we've looked at uh, that seem to converge on this year. Let's just do it again. So while I'm pulling this up, the first thing, the first couple things that made me think that 2024 would be a special year was the eclipse. You know, the eclipse was on everybody's radar uh, probably since 2017, how there was that eclipse and then this uh, like sister or corresponding eclipse on April 8th of 2024. So for that reason alone, I felt like this year uh, would probably be special. Um, but also the fact that the Salt Lake Temple originally uh, was planned to be finished this year, I still think that's significant. Uh, this is now, at, as of January 14th and after, uh, we are now in President Nelson's seventh year as president of the church, and he is in his 100th year of life. He's 99 years old. Once he completes this year, he will have completed a hundred years. So he's in his 100th year of life, seventh year as president of the church uh, during general con or sorry, we're not at that point yet. Uh, so far he's given 40 talks as president of the church. If you minus the Hosanna shout and then 111 talks as an apostle, it will be his 40 year anniversary as an apostle uh, this year. Uh, during general conference on the 7th. Uh, so that means that he'll be entering his 41st year, but he will have completed 40 years as an apostle. 20 years since Pre uh, President Oak's second coming talk, where it seemed like things kind of went crazy after that with earthquakes and other natural disasters. I've covered that in other videos. This general conference, April 2024, will be five years since President Nelson said that time is running out. And then here's the eclipse. So there's a lot of things that seem to kind of, that seem to point to this year. So I'm not saying anything's gonna happen, but I really wouldn't be surprised if something did. Uh you name it, whether it's Adam on Diamond, whether it's some other key event having to do with the second coming, what whatever you want. I think that uh this is gonna be a, a key year. So add to that that um you know, let's just add it right now. Uh, solar 
cycle 25. And uh, this is the year that they're predicting that solar maximum maximum is going to occur. So that's just another thing. I'll add it to this, this spreadsheet. Okay, cool. Uh, let's move on. The 2nd of November. A large magnetic filament eruption from the... Okay, how am I... Okay, I need to refer it. A large magnetic filament erupted... No, a large... No, I'll leave it like that. A large magnetic filament eruption from the sun resulted in a vast, quote-unquote, canyon of fire, at least double the width of the United States, was carved into the sun's southern hemisphere. Yeah, I've got to reword that. I'll do that later. Oh, yeah, here's the CNN article talking about how the forecast has been pushed up. But um, space.com, watch a massive canyon of, fi canyon of fire explode from the sun. And let's see, do they have another? Yeah. So I guess, I guess that's it. I don't know. Here, this is um, the sun unleashed a powerful eruption, carving a vast canyon of fire in the sun's southern hemisphere. So there goes the eruption. And I guess this left behind, uh, this is being referred to as the canyon of fire in the sun. So that's really interesting. So we got tornadoes and canyons of fires and vortexes and all this different stuff. Okay, November 13th, just like a couple weeks later, paper published on that day. So I don't know exactly when this was observed, but this is when the paper was published. Scientists have spotted a stunning aurora-like, quote-unquote, a quote-unquote aurora-like display of crackling radio waves over the, over, <coughs> sorry, the surface of the sun that is strikingly similar to the northern lights on Earth. Scientists have detected aurora-like radio signals from distant stars in the past, but this is the first time they've seen a signal of this kind from our own sun. So, uh, I don't know. It's probably happened before, but for whatever reason, this is the first time that we're detecting it. Um, this, of course, is not an actual image of that. It says, an, ar an artist's illustration of the aurora-like emission from the surface of the sun. So, and it seems like it was just, just radio waves. I don't know. Okay. Uh, December 5th, large coronal hole, wider than 60 earths. Okay. So we've seen this before, right? We've been going all over all the other times that there have been uh, coronal holes. In fact, there was one earlier in 2023 in March. So this is the second one that I know of for 2023. 60 earths wide but the thing that th that sets this apart from the other ones is this this is unprecedented at this stage of the solar cycle according to scientists it took shape near the sun's equator whereas they are typically located near the sun's poles during this stage of the solar cycle and not near the equator okay so this is the first time that they're observing a um, coronal hole during this part of the the solar cycle, and this one, geez, that one, this one looks a little ominous. I don't know if it's just the <coughs> the filter or what, but I don't know the shape of it. I don't know that looks a little scary to me. Let's look at the other ones again. So we have that one, eh, not as scary, but pretty big. This one. It's kind of scary. Um, you know, and then we've had the other ones, but let's just go back. And then there's this one. Holy cow. Looks like the, the Eye of Sauron from Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Look at that. It's the Eye of Sauron. Okay. So, uh, okay. And then December 14th, just a couple weeks later, uh, an X 2.8 solar flare the largest since the 10th of September, 2017. This was, this was also one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded. So not just the largest solar flare since the 10th of September, 2017, but one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded. Now, uh, 
I have, let's see, I think I have it right here. Nope. Where is it? I have it right here. I have this spreadsheet where I'm keeping track of these, what I feel are bookends. Okay. Events that take place around the beginning of President Nelson's uh, presidency. And then now within like this, this last year or two. I don't know that his presidency is coming to an end. Maybe he'll live another 10 years. I don't know. But all I know is that there's these like corresponding events that, that keep happening. So for example, the eclipse in 2017, just a few months before he became president of the church and the one that's coming up on the 8th of April. Um, let me just go over some of the more obvious ones. Uh, you've had these lunar events take place. Um, just 17 days after he became president of the church, we had a super blue blood moon. And then the next blue moon was on Halloween of 2020. And then the next blue moon was also a super blue moon. Just nine days before president Nelson turned 99 on nine, nine, September 9th. So he had the, the, the one in the middle. I mean, blue moons happen every so often. That's, it's not really that rare, but when they're combined with some other event, like they're also a super moon at the time, meaning that the moon is closest in, in its orbit to the earth. So it looks larger or when a lunar eclipse is taking place, then it's, it's even more rare. So you have these two, uh, blue moons associated with these other events happening at the same time, which make them more rare. Okay. The first year of his presidency and then, uh, August 30th of last year, 2023. Uh, Fox's scene at the Temple Mount, 2019, and then last year, 2023. Um, I'll get back to that one. In the first year of his presidency, Paradise, California was destroyed by fire. Last year, uh, August 8th, Lahaina, Hawaii was destroyed by fire. So you have these two uh, locations that were, you know, strangely destroyed by, by wildfire and like complete, almost completely destroyed. Um, his first year as president of the church, there was the Trident Juncture 2018 military exercise. And it was the largest NATO exercise since the end of the cold war, but that was passed up or it will be passed. No, today's the day, the 31st of January. I guess it starts today. Uh, today begins the largest NATO exercise since the end of the Cold War, even bigger than the than Trident ju- Trident Juncture. So 2018 and now 2024. It, it's weird how this kind of stuff keeps happening, and um, with solar flares. Okay, so on the on uh, the 14th of of December, that was the largest solar flare since September 10th, 2017 just a few months before he became, he became president of the church. And then after that, so there, so there's that Uh, amazing sun flare was one of the largest solar radio events ever recorded. NASA says, and this is the X 2.8, which by the way, it's interesting to note that uh, the other solar flare back in 2017 was 8.2. So 2.8, 8.2. We've seen that kind of thing happen before as well. But then just a couple weeks later on New Year's Eve, this is on Forbes, 2023 ends with strongest X-class solar flare for, for six years. Get ready for Aurora. So this was literally, um, yeah, it was just like a couple weeks afterwards that it was passed up by an X5 solar flare. And now that's the largest solar flare since 2017. All right. And so that's what I have. And then we have the newest entry that we went over at the beginning, the uh, sympathetic solar flare, where you have a simultaneous, like two solar flares going off at the same time, but from different sunspots. And uh, we just read... Uh, at the beginning of the video that it's extremely rare for that to happen. So I may have missed, I may, I be, I may be missing other things. If you know of anything that I didn't cover here, uh, send me an email. 
with uh, the article and then I'll add it and do a video about it. So that's what I got. Uh, like I said, I need to make another spreadsheet just to track um, other space events like things taking place with planets and other stars from other, other solar systems. Um, you know, phenomena like that, but I need to have this one specifically for the sun because so much is taking place with the sun. Um, so let's just take note of it. Uh, it could, it could coincide like all this could be coinciding with the second coming or some important event uh, that that goes along with the second coming. That's part of the second coming. We'll just have to wait and see. But um, yeah, that's going to be it for this one. So thank you, Anonymous, for the email. Uh, I don't think that I would have come across this. And like I said, I, w I wonder if there's more out there that I, I just don't know about right now. Um, but that's going to be it for this one. So if you haven't already, please make sure to subscribe. Like this video if you liked it. Leave your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. Also, make sure to share it, and I'll talk to you guys later.